So the first step you need to do in any sheet metal project is to cut your metal to size. Here we need to cut our metal down to 8.5 by 11. One of the easiest ways to work with sheet metal and getting your layout onto your metal is to work from the outside of your metal in. So the first thing that we need to mark on our piece of metal is our hems. That's that double layer of metal that's going to take away that sharp edge on the top of our box. For us, our measurement should be three quarters of an inch. So you're going to use your tri-square, you're going to measure three quarters of an inch in from one of the edges of your metal, then mark or scribe your line parallel to that edge. The biggest mistake my students make is they forget or don't know to mark their line parallel to the edge they measured from. A lot of times they're marked from perpendicular and things get all askew. So you're going to mark three quarters of an inch from each edge, all four edges of your piece of material and it should look something like this when you're done. Continuing to work from the outside in, the next thing we need to mark is the sides of our box. For this, it's two inches from our hemline or two and three quarters from the edge of our material. Same process, measure and mark from one edge and mark your line parallel to that edge. The biggest thing here that I remind my students is to make sure their tri-square is flush up against their metal so their lines are nice and straight and don't get at weird angles. When you're done, it should look like this, a bunch of boxes on your metal. The last piece of our layout is our tabs. It's probably the most important piece because when we're all said and done, the tabs are going to be what hold the box in its form. For this, we're going to work off of the short sides. We're going to measure three quarters of an inch towards the outside of our material from our short side and then draw our line. This should leave us with a small little rectangle popping out of each of our short sides, which will then angle off in the next step. Once you have all four of those little rectangles created, we're going to angle off all of our tabs and our hems. If you do this correctly, you should be able to line up kind of the intersections of your hems, your short sides, and your tabs with your tri-square and that 45 degree angle and mark. When you're done, you should have a little trapezoid shape for your tab and your hem should be angled off as well. You'll do this for all four corners and that will complete your layout, which should look like this. With the layout complete, you're going to grab some aviation shears or compound shears and cut out your layout. Take your time. The biggest mistake my students make is cutting off a tab or cutting out the tab incorrectly and putting it all, one of the tabs off the long side. You do this for all four corners. You should have just your little trapezoid shape and both hems angled off. When you're finished, it should look something like this on all four corners. We now get into the forming portion of this project where we're going to take our piece of metal over to our brake and we're going to make our hems, right? So we're going to take and put the fingers of our brake right on top of our hem lines, fold those all the way up, and then tamp them down again with the brake. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. In my other shop, we have a bar folder, so we'll use our bar folder to fold these all the way over and tamp them down with the bar folder. But you can see you can also do it like this and do it for all four hems. You're going to do them all at the same time. Once you have them formed on the brake, you'll take your piece of metal over to an anvil or somewhere where you can use a hammer and you're going to flatten those out. We want those hems to be pretty much double layer of metal right on top of each other without any gaps. The biggest thing when you're doing this portion of the project is to take your time and make sure the flat head of the hammer stays flat on the metal. Otherwise, you get little dents in there from the corner. Should look something like this on all four of your hems when you are finished. Before we move on with forming our material anymore, we're going to spot weld this at the end to hold this all together. So we're going to clean up those connection areas where our spot welds are going to go, clean up all the layout fluid, and any oil and grease from our material, which give us a nice strong connection when we get our spot weld on there. With the cleaning done, we go back to forming and shaping our metal to our box. So we're going to lock down on our long side and our tab line, and we're going to fold those up to 90 degrees.
Once you bend it, you want to check to make sure you're at 90. If you accidentally go a little too far, you can always just place it back into your brake, clamp it down, and just bend it back with your hands. If you go way too far, you're probably going to end up with a crease at your bend. You want to do this to both sides before we move on to the short sides. Before we move on to bending up the short sides to kind of complete the forming of our box, we need to take the tabs and get them to be right on the outside face of our long sides. Otherwise, when we go to bend the short sides, the tab and the long side will hit and they'll kind of crumple, which we don't want. So we put it in a vise, clamp it down, just bend it by hand, and have that tab be just on the outside of the long side for all four of our tabs. With those tabs flared out, we can go back to our brake. Make sure you have your fingers where your short side can go and leave space for your tab so everything doesn't get all jumbled and mushed together. Clamp down, bend up to 90 degrees or until your long sides hit your short side. You'll do this for both sides. You can see here that the one side that I bent up isn't perfectly up against the long side. That's okay, as long as you get it most of the way, you can kind of bend it by hand as you spot weld to hold it in place where you need it. Before we spot weld, we don't want those tabs completely flaring out like we have them, so we want to just flatten them up back against our long sides again. For this, we can take it to a vise and just kind of lightly clamp it back in. It doesn't have to be flat like our hems, just close enough that the spot weld will hold easily. You could also easily do this on like an anvil with a hammer. keep your box together so it can't be pulled apart, we're going to add some spot welds. I have my students put two spot welds per tab to hold everything in place. Make sure you're following the proper safety protocol and all the proper PPE when you're doing this. You could also use pop rivets to hold everything together. We have a spot welder. It makes it nice and easy and quick, and it's less consumable materials we have to use. And there you have it, a finished sheet metal box. Use it around your shop to hold all those little random things that always end up on tables. I'll have my students sand these down and paint them to stop them from rusting over time. Great beginner project to teach kids how to read prints and do some sheet metal fabrication. Thanks for watching.